Welcome to the Daily History Podcast, where we travel back in time to uncover the marvels of the ancient world. Today, we delve into the technological wonders that have stood the test of time, from the majestic pyramids of Giza to the illuminating Pharos Lighthouse of Alexandria. Join us on this 20-minute journey of discovery and enlightenment as we explore the genius of ancient civilizations and the enduring legacy of their greatest achievements. Journey with us back to an era of extraordinary achievement, a time when humanity's greatest creations first pierced the heavens and graced the earth. We find ourselves in an age where the most spectacular structures known to the ancients emerged, deemed fitting to be called the seven wonders of the ancient world. These were not merely accidents of history, but marvels meticulously selected for their unparalleled grandeur, architectural brilliance, and the sheer audacity of their creators. To be counted among these prestigious wonders, a structure had to exceed all expectations of scale and splendor. They were masterpieces that demonstrated human ingenuity and harnessed a persistence that stretched the boundaries of what was considered possible. As tributes to gods, memorials to kings, or symbols of civic pride, each edifice captured the essence of the civilizations that built them and left an indelible mark on human culture, so profound that their stories resonate with us to this day. And indeed, the wonder these awe-inspiring monuments instigate is no less vibrant in our modern minds than it was thousands of years ago. They continue to fascinate scholars and laymen alike, not only for their mystique, but also for their testament to human creativity and perseverance. As we navigate through each story and stone, we cultivate a renewed appreciation for what our ancestors achieved with the most primitive of tools, but the most remarkable of visions. Embarking on an expedition into the sands of Giza, we unveil the secrets of the pyramids, those triumphant testimonies to ancient Egyptian ingenuity. With every mammoth block set in place, the pharaohs of old aspired to immortalize their might. Architects and engineers of the era orchestrated the rise of these monoliths with unparalleled precision. Without modern machinery, the workforce relied on nothing but human strength, ingenuity, and perhaps an inclination towards the celestial. The pyramids, particularly that of Cheops, which we call the Great Pyramid, consist of more than two million stone blocks, each weighing an average of two and a half tons. A marvel of logistics, the construction of the pyramids demanded an army of laborers. Tens of thousands gathered for this monumental task, including skilled masons, surveyors, and countless others. It's believed they utilized a Nile-flooded canal system to transport the massive limestone and granite from distant quarries. But what drove the ancients to erect such colossal tributes? Theories suggest they served as stellar observatories, aligned exquisitely with the stars. The Great Pyramid itself is a compass, accurately mirroring the points of the cardinal directions. Its chambers harness cosmic alignment, perhaps guiding Pharaoh Khufu's soul on a celestial journey towards the afterlife. It's within the walls and chambers, beneath the weight of millions of stone blocks, that centuries of history whisper the saga of a civilization's apex. Here lie the untold stories, the sweat and dreams of countless souls who, under the searing Egyptian sun, committed their lives to piling stone upon stone until their pharaohs could kiss the face of heaven. The legacy of the pyramids transcends time, a testament to the triumph of human aspiration and evidence of a culture's unyielding determination to capture eternity. As we ponder these storied stones, we confront our own place in the endless march of history, the unwritten future that we too may one day see etched into stone for the awe of generations to come. Imagine, if you will, a structure so grand it seems to defy the arid landscape around it, a paradise ascending skyward in the heart of ancient Babylon. The hanging gardens, an awe-inspiring feat of ancient engineering, were terraced gardens filled with exotic plants, trees, and vibrant flowers cascading down their sides. They say if you strolled among the garden terraces, the air was cool and fragrant, a stark contrast to the surrounding desert heat. According to legend, 
These gardens were constructed under the orders of King Nebuchadnezzar II around the 6th century BCE. They were not just a testament to the king's power, but a heartfelt gift to his wife, Ametis of Media. Nostalgic for the green hills and valleys of her homeland, Ametis was said to find solace in this constructed wonder, for Nebuchadnezzar wished to ease her longing with a piece of her distant, verdant home. But now we must step from the mists of legend into the realm of history, where the existence of the hanging gardens themselves is up for debate. No definitive archaeological evidence has yet come to light within Babylon's remains to prove the presence of this wonder. Some theories place the gardens at Nineveh, another Mesopotamian city. Others question whether they ever existed at all or merely sprang from the imaginative accounts of Greek historians and travelers dazzled by tales from the East. Despite this uncertainty, the idea of the hanging gardens continues to enchant us, embodying the lengths to which human ingenuity and the desire for beauty can reach. Envision, if you will, the interior of the great temple at Olympia, where stood one of the most awe-inspiring creations of the ancient world, the Statue of Zeus. This monumental sculpture, created by the renowned artist Phidias in the 5th century BCE, towered at an estimated height of 13 meters, or over 40 feet tall, a size that nearly touched the temple's ceiling. Its grandeur was not just in its size, but in its exquisite composition. The god was crafted using ivory plates and gold panels over a wooden framework a technique known as chryselephantine. The majesty of Zeus was palpable. Seated on his ornate throne, he bore a scepter in one hand and a statue of Nike, the goddess of victory, in the other. Phidias's masterpiece was more than a marvel of scale. It was a testament to artistic excellence. The attention to detail was unparalleled, from the intricate depiction of the god's robes to the lifelike rendering of his facial features. The throne alone was a work of art, adorned with gold, precious stones, ebony, and ivory, featuring detailed reliefs of various mythical scenes. This statue wasn't just a standalone piece. It was the centerpiece of a cultural and religious symphony, with every element and design choice contributing to a grand, harmonious narrative. The use of chryselephantine symbolized both the divine nature and the imperishable worth of the god it represented. But the significance of the statue of Zeus at Olympia extended far beyond its artistry. It became a site of pilgrimage, beckoning visitors from all corners of the Greek world who would gaze upon the statue in awed reverence. This was a religious experience. The statue embodied Zeus's omnipotence and served as a reminder of his watching presence. Its cultural impact was profound as well, as it reflected the values of the society that built it a society that esteemed athletic excellence and honored their gods through the dedication of such breathtaking works. The artistic and cultural legacy of the statue of Zeus continued to resonate through the ages, long after the original no longer stood, illustrating the enduring power of art and religion fused in perfect harmony. As we continue our exploration of ancient marvels, let us turn our gaze to the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, a structure that stands as a testimony to the grandiosity of classical architecture. When it was built, this temple was not only a symbol of piety, but also a powerhouse of creative and structural magnificence. It was renowned across ancient lands, proclaimed as one of the largest temples of its era. The economic and cultural implications of the Temple of Artemis were profound. Located in the thriving city of Ephesus, now modern-day Turkey, the temple served as both a religious sanctuary and a bustling hub of trade. Pilgrims and traders alike would journey from distant regions, lured by the splendor of Artemis's sanctuary. Their arrival infused the city with wealth and diversity, making it a focal point of commerce and spirituality during its time. Over centuries, the Temple of Artemis witnessed not one, but multiple reconstructions, each due to its unfortunate susceptibility to destruction. The earliest known iteration of the temple dates back to the Bronze Age, long before its zenith during the Greek era. In 356 BC, a man named Herostratus infamously set the temple ablaze in a bid for eternal notoriety. 
The structure was later rebuilt only to meet its demise once more in 62 AD by the Goths during their invasion. Despite its ultimate ruin, the legacy of the Temple of Artemis continues to intrigue scholars and architects alike. Each reconstruction of the temple displayed the resilience of the human spirit and our relentless pursuit to rebuild what is lost, often grander than before. Knowing that it once stood with towering columns, reaching 60 feet into the sky enthralls the modern world. Although today only foundations and a solitary column remain, these ruins whisper stories of a past when the Temple of Artemis commanded awe from all corners of the ancient world. In the heart of ancient Caria, now modern-day Turkey, lies the remnants of a grand structure that immortalizes a ruler's legacy. We are talking about the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, an extravagant tomb built for Mausolus, a powerful satrap of the Persian Empire. After Mausolus' passing in 353 BC, his grieving widow Artemisia commissioned this awe-inspiring structure as a testament to his glory. Designed by the architects Satyros and Pythias, the mausoleum stood at approximately 45 meters high, making it one of the tallest structures of its time and earning it a rightful place as one of the Seven Wonders. Delving into its architecture unveils a rich tapestry of cultural intermingling. The mausoleum was a harmonious blend of Greek, Egyptian, and Anatolian influences, reflecting the diverse nature of the Carian Empire. Its stepped pyramid roof hearkened to the ziggurats of ancient Mesopotamia, while Egyptian elements surfaced in the fluted columns and intricate reliefs. The structure was adorned with magnificent sculptures crafted by renowned Greek artists like Scopas and Leo Charis, bridging art across civilizations. This architectural marvel not only served as the ultimate resting place for Mausolus, but also as a striking symbol of his reign and influence over the region. The term mausoleum has since become synonymous with grand tombs, originating from this very structure, memorializing Mausolus's name through the ages. Its legacy prevailed even after the structure succumbed to earthquakes, and today it continues to influence the construction of stately tombs globally. The story of the mausoleum at Halicarnassus is one of grandeur and influence, echoing the ambitions of a leader whose death gave birth to a word that would forever connect us to the splendor of ancient ingenuity. Imagine a towering giant of bronze, standing over 30 meters tall, its reflective surface casting a commanding presence over the harbor of Rhodes. To ancient mariners, this colossal figure would have been both a welcoming sight and a symbol of pride for the Rhodians, the Colossus of Rhodes. Constructed between 292 and 280 BCE, this mammoth sculpture was erected to celebrate a hard-fought victory over the ruler of Cyprus, Antigonus I Monophthalmus, whose son's attempt to besiege the city was thwarted. However, despite its grandeur, no depictions of the Colossus have survived to provide us with a clear image of what it looked like. Some say its legs straddled the harbor entrance, though most scholars dismiss this as logistically impossible. Others believe it stood in a more traditional pose, perhaps holding a torch or a spear, akin to the Statue of Liberty. With only literary descriptions and the myths carried through time, we're left to debate and envision the statue's true appearance using our imagination and scattered historical clues. The lifespan of the Colossus was shockingly brief. After standing for only 56 years, the statue met its demise in 226 BCE when a violent earthquake shattered its knees, causing the structure to collapse. Although an oracle suggested leaving it in ruins, the sheer amazement at its size and complexity led to the remains being a tourist attraction for over 800 years until the metal was eventually scavenged. The Colossus of Rhodes might have fallen, but its memory stands tall as a testament to the creative and engineering heights the ancient Greeks aspired to, forever leaving an imprint in the history of monumental sculpture. As we navigate the annals of history, our next destination is the shores of Alexandria, where the majestic Pharos Lighthouse once guided ancient mariners safely to port. Esteemed for its remarkable application of engineering, the lighthouse was not merely a beacon, 
it was a marvel of innovation and practical design. Engineered in the 3rd century BCE on the small island of Pharos in Alexandria's bustling harbor, this towering edifice was constructed under the reign of Ptolemy II. Its purpose was to project light far into the horizon, a beacon for seafarers, using a system of mirrors to amplify the light from a furnace at its peak. The pharaoh stood approximately 450 feet tall, according to ancient accounts, and was reputed to be visible for up to 30 miles offshore. This blend of form and function exemplified the advanced technological mindset of the time. But the pharos was more than a guide. It was a symbol of security and prosperity. Think of Alexandria, a thriving hub of trade and culture, its well-being tied to the safe and timely arrival of ships from across the Mediterranean. By ensuring that vessels could navigate to the port after dusk or during inclement weather, the lighthouse directly contributed to the city's economic vitality. Additionally, it served as a landmark, a striking feature that welcomed traders and travelers to one of the ancient world's most significant metropolises. Let us also recognize its lasting legacy. The Pharos Lighthouse is acknowledged as the archetype for all subsequent lighthouses around the globe. Its influence persists in the word phorology, meaning the study of lighthouses, and indeed in every lighthouse that stands today, spreading beams across the waters, safeguarding ships, just as the Pharos did over two millennia ago. In reflecting on this colossal wonder, we marvel at the ingenuity of the ancients, whose works continue to light our way through the ages. As we wrap up today's adventure, let's take a moment to recall the incredible tapestry of history we've journeyed through. We've reveled in the stories of human ingenuity and the remarkable structures that bear testimony to our ancestors' ambition and skill. The seven wonders of the ancient world, each a marvel in its own right, continue to captivate our imaginations and challenge our understanding of what is possible. These wonders, monuments, temples, and statues are not just relics of the past. They are echoes of ancient creativity that still resonate in our modern world. They remind us of our shared heritage, the desire to leave a mark, to create something grand, and to push the boundaries of our capabilities. The pyramids of Giza, for instance, still stand as a testament to architectural prowess, a timeless connection to the stars above, just as the remnants of the Temple of Artemis beckon us to ponder the mingling of culture and religion in public spaces. In contemplating the awe-inspiring Colossus of Rhodes or the towering Pharos Lighthouse, we're reminded of the power of art and science, realms that continue to intersect and propel us forward. As we reflect on these narratives, let us carry forward the spark of curiosity that fueled the ancients. May we continue to value the blend of art, engineering, and history, acknowledging how these disciplines combined can conjure wonders which transcend the boundaries of time. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the past. If you've been inspired or intrigued, please subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what ancient mysteries you'd like us to explore next. The topic with the most likes stands a chance to be featured in an upcoming episode. Until our next adventure in history, keep pondering the wonders that have shaped our world. Goodbye.